Hello, welcome back to the Best Ever You Global Summit. I'm Chris here with Elizabeth, and we are so excited to introduce our next guest. Brian Hilliard, but I, hang on, Brian, one second, because we really have to, I guess I got to put this, <laughs> what have you got going on there? <laughs> uh, me, yes, I'm wearing oh, yeah. gaming headset that is my nephew's because five seconds ago we had technical difficulties, but you know what I am? A solutions girl. And I know both Elizabeth and Brian can appreciate that. Solutions headset is on. But the important thing is, oh, solidarity. I love you guys. Oh, yeah. We're with you. So All right. thank you for wearing headsets. Go ahead, Elizabeth. Tell us a little bit more about Brian before we before we let the man talk. <laughs> Brian's just amazing. I, I call, I was just saying to my husband, Brian's probably like one of the best public speakers I've ever encountered. He was on the best ever you show a while back. And I just just I was taking notes and listening, and I'm like, wow, you are stage. I gotta take this up to it. Can't hear. I actually can't hear. I would hear how loud I, I am. Hear. I love you. <laughs> 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 and um, but he uh, he's a referral from Dr. Ivan Meisner, you know, our, our father of modern networking. Um, and he's written a book with Dr. Ivan Meisner called Networking Like a Pro. Yep. And so, Brian, thank you so much for being here. Oh, this is my pleasure. I'm fired up. I'm looking forward to it. It's something where, you know, anytime you get a chance to talk with two lovely ladies, I take it. So no problem. Appreciate it. <laughs> we want to get to your giveaway right off the bat so people okay. know what you're giving away. I think that's that's super important. Okay. Well, we're going to be doing a, um, I'm going to be talking a little bit about success and everyday success habits. And one of the points that I've, and we'll obviously, I'm sure, talk about this. One of the points that I talk about a lot is how is it that some people are more successful than others? Why is it that one person who has similar training, skill set, and work ethic may be able to achieve a certain level of results and the other person with the exact same skill set, training, and work ethic maybe is less so? Uh, there's a few reasons for that, and obviously I'm sure we'll talk about that here today, but part of it, and here's the spoiler alert, unlocking the mindset of success, okay? I put together a quick little 10 minute audio. It's really the three things that I think, obviously from a mindset standpoint, that are everyday success habits. I put it on my, um, if you go to everydaysuccesshabits.com, it will actually, I'm kind of, we were talking about this before, I'm kind of funny a little bit about email. So I was trying to figure out, I'm like, how can I get this to people without them thinking I'm going to spam them? And fortunately, I went to the solution that's almost a solution for everything except for social media, which is Facebook. So it will be in my group. You go to that page. You hit the download button. It'll shoot you to my group. Just totally so you know, but it's right in there. Uh, you should be good to go. Yeah. So that's awesome. That's everybody chiming into our summit. will have access to that yeah. video with Brian with the three hot tips for mindset. We'll yeah. make sure all those links are included with this video so you okay. can access it super easy and we'll make sure that everybody can get that. So Brian, thank you so much. I can't wait to watch that video. Find out more. I love mindset, but I love, I feel like that's a journey of lifelong learning and you can always, always continually grow, continually add on. And so thank you for that. One no of my problem. kids just said they're jealous of that headset, so it must be a good one. And if you start playing Call of Duty while we're live on air, I'm going to have a chat. <laughs> That's funny. That's good work. Good start. <laughs> good one. All right, Brian Hilliard, what makes you different from other coaches? Well, I've been speaking and coaching since 2001. You know, I started my business in 01, uh, actually right after around the 9-11. And it was one of those things where I started off speaking first, and then I did some coaching. Because remember, at the time, there weren't coaching. Like, coaching as we know it didn't exist back then, or at least to me it didn't. And what happened was I would go out and I would speak, and I would meet people, and they would, you know, they'd like, oh, their presentation was great. I'd be like, fine. And then I'd do another presentation, and they're like, it was great. And they're like, can we talk with you afterwards? I'm like, sure. So we wind up talking and talking and talking and talking, then realizing that maybe I should, like, I'm going to have to charge people for something like this. So I always tell people my first coaching client was $45 a month, okay? Like, that's how it was. And it was interesting because it allowed me to be able to talk with people, engage with folks, do some different things. Um, and I think what makes me different, to be honest with you, and I'm not putting anybody down. I think, you know, you can like vanilla ice cream and, or chocolate ice cream, which doesn't mean that ice cream proper is bad. OK. And I think what happens is when you are talking about maybe somebody like myself, it's a conversation around a partnership approach. I am not trying to tell people what to do. I don't have kids. I don't want to have kids. 
I don't want to be telling people what to do when I'm sitting in my you know, chair or something like that doing that. It's a partnership approach. It's being able to leverage my years of experience and be able to make it easy for people to understand, which is the second thing people have told me. They're like, you know, boy, you really made that seem easy. And that gets back to, you know, and, and you guys might appreciate this as well. That gets back to that whole level of consciousness that you I'm sure have heard of where you have your, how does it start off? You're competent that you are incompetent. So you know what you don't know. Yeah. Then you're competent or you're, you're aware of what you do know, but you have to really, really think about it. Okay. And then you get to the point where you get to the that fourth level up where you're so good. It's unconscious. And that's a lot like it's, it's a, a real funny story. I was at a golf tournament uh, down in Houston. I was watching the Shell Houston Open. And those guys are so good. And I was watching Bob Estes. And uh, let's see, it was Bob Estes, Jason Gore, and oh, Jesper Parnovic. We were following around. And they made it look so easy that I could just swear to God that I could carry my my three wood over 220 yards worth of wood. Like if you gave me a club right there, I would have just I would have been like, put a hundred dollars down. Like, hole in one, hole in yeah, one, money on yeah. Brian all every, day. Every time. So I think what makes me different, getting back to your point, Elizabeth, I'd like to think what makes me different is being able to leverage my years of experience. Not a lot of people have that. Be able to make it easy. That's a skill, if you don't mind me saying. And then being able to have it in a way that they can actually implement it and integrate it into their everyday lives. Because just like in business, nothing ever starts until a sale happens. I think the same thing is true when you're talking about personal growth and development. Nothing ever starts until you actually get it into your life. Beautiful. Yeah, that is so true. And I think another one for you that I want to highlight is your communication style. You're very engaging, right? Like uh, it's delightful talking to you. And I think that matters too, being able to get that rapport really quickly. Like, so Brian and I have just lightly stalked each other on social media for the couple weeks we've known each other. This is our first face-to-face -face yep. via Zoom. Yep. And I already want to adopt you because I'm just like, <laughs> yes, Brian, tell me more. And there's an energy that, you know, I want to celebrate with you. So I'm going to throw you some imaginary glitter uh, because you. I think that communication style is really important too and how you communicate as a coach but also how you communicate with yourself so talk to us about communication and the key parts of communicating and how, why that matters I mean you let it yeah. a little yeah, people I, have to be open yeah I, I definitely think so and, and thank you for that compliment I think part of it has to do with the idea so let's step back if we're talking about this idea of being successful and whether that is an employee who is maybe looking for a promotion or a pay raise or maybe it's an entrepreneur who's looking to get more business or maybe it's an aspiring entrepreneur looking to kind of go out on their own what what, what exactly does it mean to be successful and then from a communication standpoint how is it that you can be able to do that I think part of it has to do with the idea that there is, if, I don't know if you meant this or not, but this is how I take it, that part of it has to do with energy. And what I call, it's not what I call, it's what it is called. It's a signature energy. It's a vibrational energy. Esther and Abraham Hicks talk about this a lot. And the idea is that when you are going out and trying to, again, run your business or you're trying to, um, you know, buck for a promotion, or you're just trying to do a better job at, as an employee, what you want to be able to do is you want to be able to communicate in a clear, concise way. I think a lot of times, to your point, Chris, your implied point, is that a lot of people can overcomplicate things. They can, and I used to be like that. I'm a recovering type A person, okay? So what happens is you're, you're, you're you know, I'm originally from the Northeast, which I'm sure people can tell. I'm originally from the Northeast, lived in, um, you're actually, Elizabeth, not in, the, I guess technically it's the Northeast too, right? It's like Maine or something, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so so I, I'm originally from Connecticut, grew up in Connecticut, went to school uh, at Duke down in the Southeast, which is obviously North Carolina, lived in Atlanta, now live in North Carolina, a city called Fayetteville. It's about an hour and seven and 12, 15 minutes south of Raleigh. Anyway, all of that is to say that when you're talking about communication and how you can, again, communicate and be successful with others, it really is, in my mind, a conversation around being clear, being straightforward, not overcomplicating things, um, having a degree of clarity. You know, one of the things I talk about in this concept of an everyday success habit is this idea that successful people are clear. Like you don't, run into a lot of successful people. I haven't. Maybe you have. 
But I haven't run into a lot of successful people who are like, boy, you know what? I've got, they have a lot of stuff going on, but they're decisive because they're clear. Okay. They're clear on where they're going. Their vision, their, excuse me, their mindset is in alignment with their vision and their actions in between. That's what sets them up. And I think that's where a lot of people, they fall down. They try to go with a vision that they're maybe unclear of. They don't have a mindset that's in alignment with that. They try to do all these certain actions that aren't really, you know, aren't them for whatever reason. And they don't pick up the skills that they need either on the mindset or the skill set side to move forward. And communication is definitely one of those skills. Love that. I love how you said you're recovering type A personality. I definitely relate to that. Yeah. I'm sure Elizabeth does too as strong type A's, but the recovering <laughs> part, talk to us about that. So what was that shift like for you going from, and so type A, everybody knows that's the like championing busy and having projects and firing on all cylinders and right. no sleep and hair straight back, just go, go, go. Right. And so what was that shift like and how did you sort of start and embrace that shift for yourself right. personally? Right. That's a great question. I appreciate that. I think I think part of it. OK, so I started my business in 01, like I said, and I was like, go, 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 which you have to do. And that's fine. What happened was I realized I actually went down three times in two years down, like on the couch, not able to get up. I remember I could not watch television because I got dizzy. I couldn't sleep in the room. I don't remember why, but I couldn't sleep in the bed. OK, and for I remember thinking to myself, I'm on the couch and I'm like, I couldn't do anything. And I'm thinking to myself, geez, you know what? My body is going to put me down or I can go down. It's my choice. But either way, either way, we're not going to be able to keep going, push, push, push all the time. And that for me, it took three times in two years. But that for me was the impetus for getting going down that road. Now, part of it too, we talk about type A personalities and I'm gonna relate that to success and, and being the best you and all that if you don't mind. Mm -hmm. Part of it is that in Western culture, this is my opinion, but I do believe it's true. In Western culture, there's a lot of push, 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 go, go, go. That's what we think it means to be successful. OK, it reminds me I was I was looking at this. I read this in a book a while back. It's a great point. They were talking about the Soviet Republic and we had communism over there for a while. We had Stalin and we had um, Le Marx. We had some stuff going on in Russia mm -hmm. and that's fine. OK, and then what happened was they transitioned to capitalism and that didn't really work. And it's not because the Soviets are a bunch of idiots or anything like that. What happened was and this was the best point I heard. You know why I did one of the reasons why it didn't work? One of them was the infrastructure wasn't great. But the other reason, the main reason was because the people, their idea of what capitalism was, was a replication of all of the things that were bad. Stalin said for years, these bunch of soft Americans. Marx says for years, these bunch of soft people. They kept their idea of what success looked like in capitalism. They didn't know that you had to go, 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 push, push, push. They didn't, they didn't know that. So it didn't work for a variety of reasons. Corruption also was one of them. But when you talk about being able to be successful here in this country or in, in yours as well, in Canada, what you're looking at is most people think that success is just go, 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 push, push, push. It doesn't have to be like that. James uh, Clear talks about this idea of four pillars. And he says that you have friends like on a, um, on a stove. You have friends. You have, let me think, friends, family, work, and health. There's four kind of like on like a stove, you know, the four pillars. Okay. Yeah. And the idea is that we think we always have to have one going super, super high. You don't. The thing that I say, and this was you talking about my journey, I had to realize this very simple point. And this is a mindset point. I had to realize that every there, everything needs to be made a priority if you're going to be successful. But the different people or the different things that you make a priority can change as you go through your day, week, month, and year. So my priority might be my business. In a half hour, my priority is going to be walking my dog. In another 20 minutes, after that, it's going to be working out. After that, we'll probably be back to my business. After that, I'm making dinner for my girlfriend. OK, so you can have different priorities. And then the way I describe it real easily is that a type A personality looks and I'm not disrespecting anybody. I'm just talking. But a type A personality looks at it as the faucet is always either on or off. 
they look at activity and, and results as like turning on the faucet. And I would respectfully push back on that. It's actually more like a gradient, like a light, where it can be high, medium, or low. And when you under, when I understood that, it made life a lot easier. Oh, so totally agree. I When I, I did the type A thing back when I worked at Merrill Corporation in Minneapolis back in the early 90s, and it killed my immune system flying and kids and oh, yeah. just all of it, everything, nothing had a different priority. Right. Mm -hmm. And as I've in now 51, my priorities are very clear each day mm -hmm. and even moment to moment throughout the day. Yeah. Yeah, That's the priorities problem. shift all the time. People will say, "How do you get so much done?" or "How do you how do you do all that?" And it's like because the priorities are are fluctuating. That's exactly right. And if I can just make one add-on point to that, if Please, you don't mind. Yeah. It's it's the idea one of the things that I talk about is managing your energy, not your time. I, all right? I, and I, this yeah. is this is if you don't mind me saying like I think this is important because what yeah. happens is you have this idea again back to western society it's I need to go and I need to push and I need to go push go and and they it's this one giant exercise in in time management okay and actually I don't think that's the case anymore I think now and I think it's been that way for the last 10 15 years certainly when we had this thing called the internet come up okay and that was the change by the way the internet was the first time when the amount of information and the amount of stimuli exceeded our ability on a regular basis to download it and take it in. It's the first time in 2000 years that that happened. So you have this situation where this thing is out there pulling you and you literally can do everything in terms of putting it out there, but you got to manage your energy. What does that mean? Managing successful people are able to prioritize. Successful people understand that, you know what, I'm going to put my energy towards, you know, putting up my Facebook ads and getting ready for a presentation versus, you know, uh, fooling around with the cable company. Both of them are tempting, right? But one of them is something that is in line with the priority and the vision, back to that again, of what it is that we're going to do. And I think a lot of times if people got their mindset in alignment with their vision, then the skill set or the activities of what you need to do, that actually is readily apparent. It's just that we make it hard because we do it backwards. We start jumping in. Most people approach their day like watching sixth graders coming out of school, going into summer break. It's like this busting thing through, right? And they've got like five pounds of ice cream or something like that. It's all over the place. And they wonder, they're acting, oh, well, why can't I get some more ice cream? Why can't I get more clients? Why can't I get a promotion? Why can't I get a pay raise? Part of it is because the ice cream you have is already all over the place. The other part of it is you weren't real clear on your vision in the first place. And the other part of it is because your vision wasn't clear, your mindset's not allowed to that, how can we give you anything? You really are, should be happy with what you already have. And I'm going to add to you, if I can, because wrapped in all that also are the values. That's why we right. kind of have like those six core, those six um, uh, areas of, of your life on Best Ever You. Um, and with the core being so important with your values, because your values drive all of that as well. And um, the, the what happens is if you act like the sixth grader with the ice cream everywhere and you're going, 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 going all the time, you will burn out unless you manage your energy, unless you yep. take those breaks. Like Chris is a, is a famous 44 year old nap taker. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yeah. I am. Thank you, Ronnie. Yeah. Right I used to wear the I used to wear the badge of honor that was like, I am busy. See how busy I am? Do you want me to tell you how busy I am? Now I'm right. like, I am napping. But right. I do. I really value my rest. And that was a values change for me. And I like you, I'm a mindset champion. But I know that it took me also some really strategic, like, I have to change. And and so for you, I, I just want to circle back when you said I had these three times where I was flat out and I was yeah. just like, couldn't move like down and out. And so that was a catalyst for you. And I mean, it took yeah. three times. We don't want everybody to have that. We don't want people yeah. to have, I had to fall down three times, like hard out lights out. And yeah. so what, what, what are the precursors for like, you need to like, how do you advise someone who is maybe not even started the journey or just so new at it. And they're kind of like, I don't have a vision. I don't have mindset. Brian's telling me all these great things. I don't know right. where to start. It's too much. I'm just gonna wait till I fall down and then see like, yeah. what would you say to that? Yeah. So we're going to go with the, uh, the opposite of the broke 
fix it approach. Uh, we're just going to go straight to the fix, which is the recommended course of action. I would say, I would say that the first thing you want to do is you want to take a look at what's important to you. You got to figure out whether it's going to be your career, whether it's good. And you can you can have these priorities. Right. So it's your career, your family and your health or how, how you just put your three or four things up there. That's the first step. Just getting them down. OK. Then the second step is to being able to take a look at how is it that I can incorporate some of these things? Remember, I made the point that you can reprioritize throughout the day. How is it that you can do some of these things so that you can do that? All right, well, let's give you a real life example. I think being an early riser is super important for success. I think that's important if you want to be your best ever self. Um, that doesn't mean you got to get up at oh dark 30, okay? But I think that you want to make sure, you know, I don't know. I was thinking about this today. I don't know of a person who, like Bill Gates, Michael Dell, uh, Brian Tracy, Tony Robbins, maybe even Dr. Meisner. I don't know. All of those people, at least they've told me, yeah, they, they, they get up. They get up. They get up early. I personally get up between 5.30 and 6 every day during the week. Now, on the weekend, separate conversation. I'm not. That's fine. <laughs> during the week, 5.30 to 6 every day. OK, now you talked about, Chris, what could they do to get started? Well, we first one was the vision. OK, they got to understand what they're trying to do. All right. Second thing is now I have these three things, Brian, work, health, family. What do I do with them? All right. Well, there is a conversation around getting up, getting going. I'm all about the morning routine. OK, I am all about the morning routine. I think that might be one of maybe not the single most underrated aspect for success, but it's it's in the conversation. OK, so I go in there with the morning routine. Here's what I do. I get up right off the bat and then I go. Uh, let's see. I do my 15 minute fat burn walk. I got that from a guy by the name of Ben Greenfield talking about fitness and stuff like that. So right off the bat, I'm taking a walk. OK. As I'm doing a walk, I still have that subconscious kind of, I'm still kind of sleeping, but I'm not getting hit by a car, so I got to pay attention, but I still have things kind of going on, right? So I actually have my cell phone with me. I'm voice to texting stuff, literally. So now I'm working out, I've gotten out early, and I'm doing some work. So I'm getting a little bit of both here. I circle back. I usually do, um, I'm usually jump right into the Bible. I'm actually reading Galatians right now. That's fine. And then I'll do, um, I'll go to my work. That whole thing is done in about 45 minutes. So right off the bat, I'm able to circle all of that in one fell swoop. Then what I do is, and I this was important, I had to make it a little bit of a game with myself. So what I'll do with that is I'll say, all right, Brian, you know, we talked about those three things, right? Fitness, uh, work, and family. I don't have the family part in there because that's a given. Like my girlfriend will poison me if I decide not to. Do that. By the way, if Rightly you ever, so. yeah, if you see <laughs> if you see that there's any issue at all, I told her, I said, if there's any issue at all, if I slip and fall, if the plane crashes, if I fall out of my hotel room in Montana, they're coming for you. I said, so don't do anything. They're going to come for you. All right. So, <laughs> I'm here. <laughs> so anyway, right. so I, I make sure, so I don't have that because that's a given for me. Right. But what I'll do is like, if I do like a mile walk, I'll, get, I'll say like, okay, I want to get seven points for the week. And if I do a mile walk, that's a half a point. If I do a workout, that's one point. Uh, if I get into the word a little bit, that's a half a point. If I uh, meditate, that's a half a point. This is just a little system I worked up. And what happens is it keeps me engaged like a dog with a bone. You ever see that? They get in there and it's like, oh, this is rattling. That's like me. I'll, I'm getting in there and I'm just doing this the whole time. And it keeps me engaged. And here's the trick, Chris. It keeps me well-rounded. Love it. Yeah. Okay. Otherwise, I, I'm just going like this the whole time. And obviously, business works out for itself. I would absolutely love our group of listeners to type in the comments what their morning routines are like. I know we have some comments coming in for you. So as, as you, as we, they come in, maybe we'll read them, but sure. my, my morning is a little different. What about you, Chris? My, so my morning. No, mine's is, exactly like Brian's. Yeah. I want mine to kind of be exactly like Brian's, but mine is <laughs> cause it's, I've got like 500,000 feet of snow out there. So I'm not doing that morning. That might be like a morning run to not right. sleep. But um, so my morning is more like lemon water and a green smoothie and a book. And I go, th we call this room in the house, the peace and tranquility room. It's always been called that. And so my morning is like more chill. And then at about 1030 or whatever, then I kind of get going a little bit 
bit more. And Chris and I do like our percolate daily every day. We have a, yeah. we have a, more, a group that we go live in every single morning. Wow. Since January. Wow. That has been a game changer. Wow. To do mindset and breathing. You should, maybe you should join us as a guest on that one day. That might be so much fun to have him in there as a guest, Chris. I'm very um, open to that. I appreciate oh, that'd be fun. Awesome. But so we do like mantras and, and Chris leads the way and it's, it's just wonderful. It's percolate daily with, with Chris and Elizabeth or Elizabeth and Chris, whatever, whoever <laughs> leading the day that day, whatever. <laughs> but um, yeah, I love that. Morning I do too. too. And I do, I value, I protect my mornings. Like I right. keep my mornings right. for me and I, and I do things a little bit differently than you, but what I loved about what you said, that point system that you've created for yourself, because like it. you, one of my issues is I get bored. I get a little squirrel, squirrel, right. magpie, shiny. And, right. and so one of my challenges personally is for how do I, cause like, I need a little bit of mixing it up. And yep. knowing that about myself, knowing that I need a little flex, like I have some friends who are like, I to the 10 minutes can tell you when I'm drinking water, when I'm doing my workout, and they're so regimented and right. they value that. And they, they're they like, I need that. If I don't do this between these exact times, and I'm a little bit more like you, where I'm like, I have a rough idea of right. the things I want to accomplish first thing in the morning to set myself right. up for success. But I need right. that, that flexibility uh, to then go maybe it's in this order or maybe there's points for these things. So I love your point system. I'd love to know more about uh, what yes. else is on your point system. The nighttime too. I think the nighttime routine is just as important as the, yep. the morning one too. Yep. And one thing that COVID has taught me is that I am not a consumer of the news at night. Right. When this all first started, I'm like, oh, that is so interesting to learn right. because it would, I would, I would have nightmares, and I've had those before right. in my adulthood. And I'm like, this is news. <laughs> I'm turning this off and just mm -hmm. just to see what happens. I gave yeah. myself permission to turn the news off, which was really strange. Um, well, and I think the other thing too is when you're talking about like the the you know the routines and stuff like that. The the other thing too is that it gets you. It's almost like an autopilot. Yeah. Okay. This has been my experience. Like I don't have to think about it, and it's a lot like golf. I'm a big golfer. If you take a look at professional golfers, okay, I'm talking about the top 150 in the PGA Tour in this country, PGA Tour. OK, you take a look. Well, and actually that includes Canada and European, but whatever. 150. OK, what you'll see is that they have a routine before each shot. You know, you talk a look at baseball players, baseball players, hitters. Baseball players are probably the most superstitious group of people on the planet. Okay. Yeah, mother they, of a college baseball player, I couldn't agree with you more. Yeah. Have a lucky pitcher. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, they have to be the most superstitious group of people, like as a whole, like as an industry. Jumped over the line. Yeah. As, a, as an industry, baseball players are probably the most superstitious group of people on the planet. Yeah. And, and what happens is they get into a routine of what it is that they're going to do. You know what I mean? And then, Chris, what I also do is talking about the point system. I'll tell you, the other, I just thought about this just now. What I also do is I also have points of emphasis. All right. So it's not point literally points of emphasis. Yeah. And I got this from Steve Mariucci, former head coach of the Detroit Lions, that's football. And one of the things that he says is, it's not what you practice, it's what you emphasize. All right. And it turns out that when you get 55 of the single best players in the, in the sport, 55 players per team, 32 teams, when you get the 55 of the best players, turns out you don't have to talk a lot of skill set with them. Right. They all, they're all 4 four fifties. They're all 320 pounds. The quarterbacks are all 6'7". Turns out that what you need to do is you need to talk about mindset to a certain extent, but you also have to emphasize certain things. So what I'll do is like I have this, I actually put it on a little smaller sheet here. I just picked it up. Sometimes, yeah. you know, I did it on a bigger one, but I just like the smaller one. Okay. So you'll see that this is Wednesday. It says Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday a.m. And yeah. you'll see it says seven and a half. Okay. Which is my point system is my goal is 15. So I'm in good shape already. And then you'll notice here, I know you can't see this, but these three things in the down here, those are my points of emphasis. Now I started off with two things, then I gradually went to three things. Yeah, you read us see. those points. We can't see it. Read okay. us those points. Uh, stretching, Bible, and 49,000 steps. That's on a weekly basis. Perfect. So I was noticing that I wasn't stretching as much as I should be. And then I was also noticing I was getting away from the word for whatever reason. And then I wanted to make sure that I had the 49,000 steps, okay, because that average is 7,000 steps a day. People are like, you need to do 10,000. If you want, knock yourself out. Put me down for five to seven. <laughs> so I did this. Now, in terms of options on here, these, there's several options. 
drink more water. So I actually have a point of emphasis of drinking four glasses of water, like the 32 ounces. Um, it could be brush the dog's teeth. Uh, it could be do the morning fat burn, but it doesn't matter because that's become a habit now, getting back to the everyday success habit. So when you have these ideas of what you're doing, and then what I have found when I put unintended benefit, when I put these points of emphasis down, it becomes a culture. Success you're training yourself. Is a yeah. right. That's exactly right. Success actually is a byproduct of what you think is how you think and what you do. A lot of people think success is something that you get. No, it's something that happens to you when you're doing the right thing and in the alignment with your vision. That's what, in my opinion, that's what success is. That's a, I that's love a it. Great, and I, oh, sorry. We, we get no. excited and we both want to talk. We're known <laughs> interrupters, but we prefer the word interject because I feel like it's much more polite. So well, I'm going to interject. <laughs> I'm going to interject go. first because all I can think about is you know, joining Robert Brace's 28 day challenge. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't need to. We talked to Robert Brace. He does a fitness program in New York. He's incredible. And he has a, a number of mind, body, soul things that connect and mindset and body. But he has he a 28 day challenge. That, that, it starts March 1st. And his yeah, name okay. is Robert Brace. And you would, uh, he's, he's, a, he's just amazing. I think that you would absolutely love his challenge. <laughs> I think <laughs> you would have fun. You guys but would have fun. <laughs> whatever you do, whatever your challenge is, what I yeah. loved uh, you, that I just said was, you know, you're training yourself. And I think right. that's the thing is that when you think about the word training and when you look at success and mindset and all of the things that you and we and people who vibrate on that higher level achieve, it's not something that happens in one or two or five days or a month. And people, I think, often look at like Brian Hilliard today and they go, oh my gosh, like that guy's amazing. He just came out of the gates firing like that. But the reality is, I'm going to guess here, the reality is that Brian in, you know, 1995 or 85 or 2004 or whatever, isn't the same Brian that we see here today and that it takes work. And I know people are like, well, when am I going to get there? So what, what would you say if I'm like, well, I'm going to start with you, Brian, but what am I going to get there? Like, how would you respond to that? I know it's a tricky yeah, question. If, if it's the, let me just back up for one point. You're right about the fact that it's not the same version. We're running the 7.0 series of Brian Hilliard right now. Okay. It's been, it's been a work in progress. I used to be angry. I used to be uh, stressed. I had an ulcer on two separate ulcer-like conditions on two separate occasions. Um, I was not the best person in terms of being a boyfriend. Like th these are things that is what I was. Okay. And it's like, okay, what is it that we want to be able to do in order to be able to, to move forward? And, and that gets back to your question. What is it that you would do to, to kind of jumpstart that and, and get that forward? Well, the first thing I would say is the point that you just made, Chris, is success is not some type of, you've heard this, but it's true. It's not, a, it's a journey, not a destination. Okay. Success is not something that I pull out. Okay. And I, I pop into the microwave and do, 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 two and a half minutes. Oh, look, it's popcorn. <laughs> that's, that's not how success works. Okay. Success is something that is, it is a culture to my point. Success is a process to probably everybody's point there. And when you have the right things in mind, literally, then you're moving in the right direction. Okay. What would I do if you're trying to go down that road? Well, the first thing is, and this is an interesting point. It's something that I got from a, um, it was a guy on LinkedIn, like Sam Denosa or something like that guy out in, um, the UK. He had a conversation about it was a it was a flow chart about the comfort zones. Okay, so bear with me here. You had a little bit of a circle, and that's our comfort zone. All right, and the comfort zone was we were comfortable, but we weren't necessarily happy. We're just we're comfortable. Okay. Next circle out is the fear zone. All right. So the fear zone, obviously, as the name implies, is where you're running into challenge. Next circle out is the learning zone. That's when you're like, oh wow, this is really really. Like, wow. And then the next, the last one is called the growth zone. Okay, now here's the thing that I wish someone had told me 10, 20 years ago, maybe not 10 years ago, definitely 20 years ago, which is in order to get out of your comfort zone to get to the growth zone, excuse me, to get to the learning zone, you need to go through the fear zone. OK, so you're going to if you're trying to lose weight, if you're trying to get a promotion, if you're trying to get more clients, if you're trying to do whatever it is that you need to do, there is going to be something that comes up. There is going to be something that gets in your way. There is going to be a roadblock, maybe plural. OK, but what here's the key. What 
unsuccessful people think is that success is a straight line endeavor. To your point, Chris, Brian just woke up. Suddenly he's, you know, oh my gosh, where is it? this book comes out? Dr. Meissner is all over the place. I have, you know, or whatever, two dogs, a nice girlfriend. Like that just happened. And that's just not the case. That's not the case at all. I had to go out of my comfort zone through the fear zone. What do you mean, Brian? Negative self-talk, fear of success. You're not good enough. Imposter syndrome, um, uh, a little bit of anger issues. Okay, I had to go through those that fear zone and out the other side. You come out. So, so unsuccessful people think it's a straight line endeavor. Successful people realize that this is just what it is you have to do. And when you talk about mindset, here's I'll make a, an analogy for you, a football analogy. I'm a sports guy. Here's what happens when things start getting tough. So you're playing football, right? And between the 20 yard lines, you're just doing fine. Defenses are hard, but they're not trying to kill you. Once you get inside the 20 yard line, that red zone, and you're trying to score a touchdown, let me tell you what, every yard is contested and the defenses get harder. Why, Brian? Because there's less area to defend. There is physically not enough room to throw the ball. There's not enough room. There's too many people. Okay. So what happens is when you start getting down there on the goal line, you know, three yard line, the five yard line, the two yard line, you know what they do in professional football? The defenses bring bigger guys in Do the offenses just say, oh no, we're just going to walk away. We'll score. You know, we'll just kick a field goal. We didn't really want a touchdown. No, they bring bigger guys in. They bring a tight end in. They bring an offensive lineman in. They bring a fullback in. They line everybody up. We say, ready, go. We hit the thing. Our running back launches over like a missile into the, into the end zone. Touchdown. That's how you have to do it. That's how the league works. So when you're talking about, oh, well, how is it I could get started? When the going gets tough, man, the tough get going, all right? Bring in a little bit of extra. One of the things that I recommend, get up 20 minutes early. Start it tomorrow. Three times a week, get up 20 to 30 minutes. It's not going to kill you. Get up 20 minutes early and see how that works for the rest of the week. All right. And then start doing some of these things that we talked about, getting into a morning routine and see if your mindset doesn't change. See if that doesn't create a vibrational energy that attracts. That's law of attraction. We can get into that. But see if that doesn't begin to attract certain things to you and for you and put that false consciousness on its side, grab it by the lapel, say that your ego is not really you because it's not your ego. It acts like you because it's this voice inside your head and people have the mistaken impression that it is you. No, it's a reflection of your pride. It's a self-defense mechanism. It's a whole bunch of things. But what it's not is you. So you understand that there's a false consciousness. Understand that success is not a straight line endeavor. Get up a little bit early. Do a few other things. Obviously, you can download the, the mindset thing. I try to remember what I actually talked about. Oh, abundance versus scarcity, <laughs> mindset, things like that. Do some of those different things, and you too can be successful. And just one last point on that, success doesn't have to be the same for everything. So success for you can be different than for me. Don't let other people tell you what success is. Oh, well, you need to make more money. Maybe you do, maybe you don't, but make sure it's something that you want to do. Maybe you want to spend more time with your family or whatever the case may be. I apologize. And, no, no, it's, it's wonderful. And project to project or whatever. But all, what I want to chat with you about because this is what people do, um, they fall back into their comfort zone. So let's Yes, they do. Um, so talk about that because success can look like this. You know, you get yes. a little bit of fear and a little bit of learning and you go back to your comfort zone. And you That's get, right. It's like a New Year's resolution. You know, That's right. we drift. I call it the drift. Yep. We drift back away from our true, uh, a true calling or true right. purpose or true, right. our, tr our, our truth. We know, okay, I would be better if I, I probably would be better. <laughs> I'll put a probably in there. If I got up every day at 5 a.m., let's just throw right. it out there. Or just 20 but I early. drift back into, I don't, I mean, I, I, I do this, but I had to go through the drift right. to get to the routine and the consistency of getting up at 5 a.m. It took a lot of alarms six weeks in a row to get up. Yeah. And, get up and I'm like, okay, body, we got you retrained and the brain retrained and everything. Right. Um, because, the, you know, my, my more natural time to wake up might be some days, depending on whatever it is, 6.30 or 7.30 right. or whatever. Right. right. Um, but t talk about what to do, why we drift or whatever you want to call it. I call it the drift. We drift That's away what... from ourselves. And uh -huh. how when we get back in there and we put our little slippers and our jammies and our, our flannels on, how to get back uncomfortable. 
Okay. I think part of it is the drift that you're talking about is a, if, 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 if it were me, I'm not saying it's you, but the okay, drift exactly. that you're talking about, I would, right off the bat, I would say that there, prob there might be a misalignment between the mindset and the vision. That's what I would say. And we just, I, I would say we need to take a look at what it is that we want and is it something that's in line with how we're thinking? That's point number one. Point number two, the way I describe that, you're talking about resiliency. Uh, Deb, my girlfriend, calls it bounce back ability. Here's the deal. When you're talking, you think about it like you're playing golf, okay? So you're out there playing golf. This is what happens to me. I'm out there playing golf. I do a good swing and the ball goes in the lake. And you're like, you know what? That's just what happens. Sometimes the ball doesn't bounce your way. It bounces into the lake. All right, now, what you do after it bounces in the lake is what decides whether or not you're going to be successful. Brian 1.0 threw his three iron into the into the pond. Who wants to do that? Okay. So now what we're like is we're not going to do that. So we're looking at it, bounces into the lake. What some people do is they look at it, the ball goes into the lake, and they're like, oh, geez, I didn't see the wind. What happened with the wind? The wind wasn't like that. Okay. Other people are like, they go to the caddy. Hold on, you gave me this club. You gave me the wrong club. What's wrong with you? Successful people, you know what they do? They go, they go into their bag and they say to themselves, I'm better than that. Drop the ball again. Go back through their routine. Hit it again because they're confident in the process. Okay. And that's that alignment part that I was mentioning earlier. You have to be confident in your process on how it is that you're trying to do stuff. So when things don't go right, things are challenged or whatever, you know, or you don't hit your sales numbers or whatever the case may be, you just got to be thinking, this is what I teach people. You got to be, th you can't take it personally. And you got to be thinking in terms of what is the adjustment. What do I need to do in order to make myself better and to be more successful? NBA playoffs are about this all the time. Basketball. Yeah. They talk about you have a seven-game series. You're talking about two weeks. You have an entire franchise. By the third game, everyone's pissed off, if you don't mind me saying that. By the fifth game, everybody knows everyone's plays, so there's no one fooling anybody, and you still have two more games to play. OK, so what happens is you have to be making adjustments. The team that makes the best adjustments is usually the team that wins the series. And I think the same thing is true in life. When you're going out to your point, Elizabeth, and you have some challenge or whatever, and you like it went down, you're like, all right, what's the adjustment? Maybe I should do 15 minutes instead of 20. Maybe I actually do do this. I just didn't mention it. Maybe it's I'm going to wake up four out of five days where I do the 530 to six for me personally. And I'm going to give myself a sleep in day. Maybe I'm going to to something else I talk about. Maybe I give myself some space and grace. It didn't work out, but I'm not looking at that as this personal reflection of me. Yeah, I'm not looking at it as, as a lack of success as this referendum on Brian Hilliard. I'm just looking at it as it didn't work out. Ball, down, club, swing. Try it again. Put a better swing. If you're not happy with the results, make an adjustment and take a better swing. I love that. I love that. You That's the key point for me right there is that you get to choose your response. And if you're not happy with the results, you get to take another swing. I'm going to say that 10 times today. That's exactly <laughs> right. And I think, you know, we haven't used this word, which is interesting, but it's more empowering. I think when you talk about the idea of being able, people are just like hamstrung by what they think they should do or how they should do it or what should happen or all of this stuff. And I'm just like, I don't, understand that. You want to focus on where, you, that's the mindset part. You want to focus on what you're trying to accomplish and where you're trying to go and understand that it's not a referendum. And sometimes, and here's the other thing, sometimes the better team doesn't always win. It's like I say, they pay the defense too. Okay. <laughs> sometimes you just don't win that day. They pay the defense too. So you move on to the next day and you try it again. <laughs> <sighs> That's a fun analogy for us too, right? We pay the defense too. So every day isn't a close the sale or like doesn't no. feel like you're moving forward in maybe the way you wanted, but everything, you, you have to look for those moments that, that you can really celebrate. I love that. Brian, is there anything um, that we haven't asked you that you wanted to talk about? I know there was a lot here, a lot of ideas to have you on here, a lot of questions we can ask. 
Um, right. Is there anything? Do we cover everything? You're you're yeah, happy with it? That, that is that is totally totally fine. I think you know one of the things just in closing is the idea that you know if I had a chance, people have asked me in the past, they're like Brian, if you had a chance to step back in time, getting back kind of to your point, maybe from about 15, 20 minutes ago, Chris, if you had this chance to step in time back in time and talk to the way I put it, your younger version of yourself, like, what would you say? And, and I think that for me, one of the biggest things is success is not a straight line endeavor. You have to be patient. Number two is that space and grace. Okay. So from a spiritual standpoint, if you don't mind indulging me for a second, you are literally giving people and yourself the space. This is usually yourself. You're giving yourself the space to fail. You're giving yourself the space to be successful. And you're also giving yourself the grace. Okay. They talk about that in the word a lot. They talk about the idea that you have a kind of a cloud that goes over you and you have space and grace. That's the main difference between the Old and the New Testament. Separate conversation, but that's the difference. So you want to be able to give yourself space and grace to be able to do some of those different things. And then at the end of the day, you want to be able to get your mindset right. Okay, you want to be coming from a place where you understand that, is this what I want? Is this how I want to do this? And then in between, what is it that I can do in order to be able to manage my energy, not my time, add some actions in between that it is in alignment with the mindset and the vision, and you should be good to go. And like I said, we've got all of this. I put together a little free gift, unlocking the mindset of success, everydaysuccesshabits.com. Came up with that myself. I love it. Everydaysuccesshabits.com. <laughs> throw and some glitter, Chris. we got to throw him some glitter. <laughs> <laughs> and you have to take part now. Now that you know, Thank we're you throwing imaginary glitter, glitter <laughs> in the air. Yes, Ryan, yes. Thank you. I love it. With that great smile. With that great, great, great smile. smile. We, got it. we have two questions to ask you in closing. Um, okay. The first one is, we have this thing called incredible yes. This is a moment. So incredible yes. It's a moment where you, you said yes to something or someone and it changed your life. And we realize that there may be multiple ones in different times, but you know, just pick one maybe and, and share with us. Okay, so the first one, when I said yes to something and it changed my life, um, there's two, but I'm gonna give you the secular version. Okay, the first one was when I decided to start my business and it made me into a different person. Chris, you made the point about the catalyst of being me down on my back and, and, and being down three times in two years, which is a true statement. But the real catalyst was me getting out of my own way and deciding to start my business. Let me tell you what, any aspiring entrepreneurs or even current entrepreneurs, you guys know this. We all know this. Your business will make you a different person, like it or not. OK, you're either going to do it the easy way or you're going to do it the hard way, but it will make you a different person. So the first thing that I would think of off the top of my head was doing that. It totally changed how I approached things. It totally changed how I was uh, doing things. And then the second thing would be I joined a men's group uh, when I was in Atlanta. And it was the first time that I had a chance to be with a bunch of guys where it was not this competitive, you know, type of thing. Women are really good at that. Women are good at community. Women are good at talking and engaging. Men, we have challenge with that. I joined a uh, men's group. It was a Bible study group. And that allowed me to be able to see some of the things that I was able to do from a different lay uh, standpoint. Wound up watching a DVD series called The Authentic Man by... Robert Lewis, if I'm not mistaken, and that also changed, and that helped me be that helped me be a better partner. So I'm going to go down with those two things. Beautiful, that's awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that. The other question we're going to ask you every day at our summit, we have a topic of the day, and I mean, you lucked out because today's topic is mindset, and so okay. I just want you to summarize what is one tip for having a positive or a strong mindset that you would give if you were to meet someone and they were like, "I just want one tip today." What would you say? Big or small, okay. one tip. Yeah, one tip in terms of being successful and obviously doing it from a mindset standpoint. Yes. Um, yeah, I, I would actually, we've, we've made the point, but I'll, I'll make it again. Um, you got to avoid that negative self-talk mm -hmm. because that's the self that's the false consciousness, okay? When you get that chatter going on saying you're not good enough, you can't do this, you're whatever, whatever, you got to avoid that. You got to be like, oh, you know what? That's nice to hear, but it's not me. 
Okay. I think a lot of times, again, we've talked about this, but I think a lot of times what happens is we hear the voice and think it's ourselves and it never occurred to us that it actually might be something else. Okay. And it's going, you know, I'll make this point real quick. The greatest trick the devil ever pulled was convincing the world that he didn't exist. I think the same thing is true when it comes to this false consciousness. Okay. The, the, this idea that we think it's ourselves and it's not. It's not even in our best interest. It's not even what we want. So I would say the one tip is to avoid that false consciousness and that whole negative self-talk. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your time. What oh. a delight. I love your energy. You have brought sunshine and sparkles into my day. And I know everyone will appreciate this video for that same reason. And so much value with the with the mindset and success and ideas that you share so eloquently. So thank you so much for joining us. Oh, so don't forget everybody go to everydaysuccesshabits.com. Yep. Brian Hilliard, we are so grateful for your time and your energy and uh, the, the uplift and the, the success. Thank you so much and much continued success to you. Thank you. All Thank right. you. Bye Take for now, everyone. Thank you.